This is Chief Naturalist Samantha Russell Blumenkerning. <clears throat> and if you have ever taken a tour with me in the late summer, early fall, you have seen me point out shaggy mane or caprinus mushrooms and talk about making ink out of here them. Here we are. So here we are in a patch of shaggy mane mushrooms. And we're gonna do just that. So step one is finding and collecting some shaggy Had mane. Had I been planning ahead, I would have brought a bag. Inky caps can be pretty inky. The next step is to put all of your mushrooms in a jar. I had to cram them into this jar, but we'll make it work. It's important to put the lid on because from what I've been reading, this is gonna be a stinky project and often there are flies involved and we don't want those to get into our house. So then our next step is we wait. Hey everyone, it's been about 24 hours so I came out to check on the ink situation and the decomposing mushroom situation and I learned a couple of things. First, 24 hours isn't enough, there's still muck to go. Second, I learned that the battery on this camera um, went dead possibly more than 12 hours ago. So unfortunately you missed some of that, but I'll make it up to you this evening. So we're gonna wait a little bit more before we go on to our next step. All right, so we had some trouble with the time-lapse shooting and it also took a lot longer than I thought. We're now several weeks later than when we were filming. We finally have some ink, or really some super, super rotten mushrooms. And so there's still some chunks floating in there. I'm anticipating it's probably gonna be kind of foul smelling. And we're gonna strain that out. And then I have some turkey feathers from my yard. We're going to make a quill pen and test it out. So, ooh, as I look in there, you can see that there is a film. And there's a very mushroomy smell. It's kind of sour on top of that. Anyway, we're going to strain it, um, and then we'll just pour it back into the cup. You can see some of the recipes I saw online um, for making this ink said that it would be pretty foul and recommended adding um, some essential oils to kind of balance it out. Should have done that. But, here we go. Oh, that is very black. <clears throat> and very sour. Sour is definitely the right way to describe that smell. And what's left is a lot of... All right, I'm back with my spatula, and I'm just pressing the remaining mushroom stuff through the grate. Mmm! So I'm gonna get rid of that. Now, and this fantastic ink. So all of that mushroom material, all of that big clump that I grabbed earlier, has made about half a cup of actual liquid. So our next step is to take the turkey primary feathers. So primary feathers are the feathers that are like right here on a turkey. Um, they are the primary feathers used for flight rather than secondary feathers, which are kind of the downy coating. Um, and my turkeys happen to be molting, so these were freely available in the yard. If you go out into nature, be very, 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 very cautious about what kinds of feathers you're collecting. Many, many, many birds are protected through um, Federal Migratory Bird Act or in other ways, and so you can't have parts of them. Even the feathers, even if you found them, because there's no way to prove it. So stick with domesticated birds, stick with birds that you've met. These are the primary feathers. I 
have never cut quills before, and so I'm delighted that I have a handful of different feathers. But, I've watched a bunch of YouTube videos, and I recommend you do as well. And the first step was to cut a less than 45 degree angle notch out of the feather. So I'm using an X-Acto knife. And, ooh. and there we did it. And there we did it. Then, looks like there's a bunch of kind of extra tissue that I'm clearing out of there. Noticing that my exacto knife is a little bit loose as well, that's no good. And so I'm just kind of going like this because there's some other feather shaft tissue in there. The next step is to score the inside to give it some flexibility as you're writing. So score meaning just scrape. I'm not making deep cuts all the way through the feather shaft, but I'm just setting it up so it can be a little bit more malleable. We have the tip of the quill all set. And then the final step is to kind of harden it up and clean off some of those edges. I can see that it's kind of rough. And when I write, I want it to be smooth. So you can use a lighter or I found some, some matches. Ooh, that's a good sizzle. I'm just Singeing the edges. Hmm. These aren't great matches. I'm going to see if I can find something else. I hardened the edge of the quill. It has some flexibility to it. It's smooth on the edges. And I have that stinky inky right here. And we're going to give it a shot. I'm dipping it in seems a little thin. Let's see what we can come up with. Ooh. It's definitely inky. Should have maybe read more about how to hold a quill. Turns out that little divot that you cut, should have maybe put it on the other side. I'm having to hold the quill like this, and that's kind of ridiculous. But, here we go. It's doing it, I think. I think this is a success. I bet there are some things that you can add to your ink. And if you are somebody who knows about ink, go ahead and make a comment and I'll test it out. But to make it a little bit thicker, but this is definitely, it's not so much a black as it is like a dark, dark brown. I'm just finishing off. It's kind of like painting with the worst most unwieldy watercolor ever. And here it is. We've got a turkey quill. We've got shaggy mane or inky cap or caprinus mushroom ink.